in your homes. Welcome to everyone globally on YouTube and welcome nationwide here on this local television station. Welcome. This is Resonate the Sound. I'm Chris Honigan. Oh yeah, by the way, like this video, subscribe to that YouTube channel, ring that bell, ding, 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 that way you ain't missing anything. You know, it's always, always been really, really good and oh yeah, by the way, uh, Easter Sunday night, the birthday of yours truly. We do have a special Resonate Sound episode that will air at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central. And if you're viewing this on Sunday night, you'll see it after your late local news. And that will be Easter Sunday night, ladies and gentlemen, April 9th. Let's get on down to the night. Hmm. You know, back on our very first season of Resonate the Sound, we did an episode called Rooted. And yours truly was outside. Yeah, took a major health risk. No, because I have allergies. Took a major health risk. And we conducted that show outside. And we talked about rooting, where your roots are. Well, you know, when you go to nurseries, and I'm talking this, as a plant perspective. However you want to classify using your scientific terms. From a plant perspective. You know, majority of a lot of homes have a little something called gardens. And most people, whether you're on farms, whether at your own house, like to plant things. You know, plant seeds in the ground, put water over it, now watch it grow. And you know, you wanna make sure that your root system is pretty good. Well, how about we take that to a whole nother level with this one? And if you love quote unquote planting and all that, you'll love, you'll get a kick out of this one. Here is our senior lead pastor, Brian Adams. Tonight, we really go in depth on, let's just say, the place called a water garden. Get your notes, get your pen, your paper, take in depth notes on this one. You're gonna need it. It's gonna make you look at a garden in a very different way. Pastor, it's all yours. It's all now. I'm ready to go water my plants. Let's go. Let's go resonate. And sometimes when we're in the middle of worship, we're just sitting there in the garden, and God's Spirit's moving upon us, and we're just relaxed in Him, we're allowing Him to flow and move on us. We're just caught up in the movement of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So, Saying that, I kind of want to talk about a water garden this morning, but I want to kind of teach a little bit, and I want you to understand that you need to water your garden. Where you at, Trey? you got to water your garden. How many of you have seen a garden that ain't never been watered? It's got weeds and everything all up in it. It's just terrible, amen? So, first place I want to go, I'm going to go to Isaiah 58, 1. I'm going to read that, and then we're going to talk a little bit 
I know I'm doing it. most of us are out of the New American Standard, and I'm probably jumping back and forth. So if some of you wanted to know which version I'm using, I use them all. Yeah. Uh, it, what hits me, it just hits me and I change it. And, and what God, what just feels right, that makes sense to y'all? Yeah. Yeah. So I've used like four different versions this morning. Uh, uh, so uh, if I can remember to tell you I will, if not, you'll figure it out. Amen? Yeah. This is how that works, amen? Yeah. So we're going to stand for the reading of the word. Then we're going to talk about water in our garden this morning, amen? Amen. Y'all look good this morning, amen? Yeah. Great worship this morning. Yeah. It, it tickles me because one of my biggest fears about moving here is we ever going to get back to where we can have the worship like we oh, used yeah. to have. Mm. Yeah. Not talking about that church. I'm talking about the worship we used to have right over that point. Yeah. And then when you just worship and move and God would move and then praying on that really hard. This morning, I think we got a good so. Yeah. You'll say it wasn't that powerful. Yeah, because yeah, you were still standing back and watching. Yeah. And then, so we believe that God's going to get us to that spot. And I think He's going to take us to places that we've never been. Yeah. 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 And then, I, I believe that. I see that. Yeah. And the more I talk, the more I need some water. It's so over handy one right there because my garden's getting dry. And then the fence has got my ears all this stuff. And to feel like I'm screaming at you, I probably am because I can't hear nothing. Okay? So just get relaxed on that. Amen? So we're going to talk about the garden this morning. And we're going to start with this verse. Isaiah 58 and 11. I'm going to do the New American Standard. And here we go. Y'all ready? I love this verse. And the Lord will continually guide you. Ain't that awesome? Yeah. Continually guide you. Now, I'll, I'm going to break down some stuff. And then you're going to stand for a little bit. But it'll be okay. All right? Continually guides you means that he ain't never going to stop guiding you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Even when you're doing wrong, he's still going to guide you. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. It's like my Tom Tom, that's what I call it. And I know it ain't Tom Tom no more than that joke age. But it's like the old Tom Tom in the vehicle. Yeah. It can tell me to go right and guide me in the right direction. That don't mean I have to listen to it. Yeah. And that's where most of us are in our lives. We thank God and God does. But the problem is we're not listening to his direction. Yeah. We're going our way. Uh oh, come on. So it says he will continually guide you and satisfy you. Ain't that awesome? Satisfy you. Satisfy your desires in scorched places and get straight through your bones. And you will be like a watered garden. Ain't that awesome? Yes. And like a stream of water whose waters do not fill. Ain't that cool? Yeah. Uh, we're going to pray the word, but I want you to get this. Really, what this verse is, is descriptions on how we should be. Mm -hmm. He guides us. Yeah. He satisfies us. Yeah. Even in the scorch. And you notice I didn't say dry places. Most of us live in a dry place. Yeah. But some of us is going through a place that's been scorched. Oh, yeah. You ever seen something scorched? Yeah. You can have dry. Dry is there. Yeah. Scorch means that the fire and the flames touched it a little bit. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. It's scorched out. There's not much moisture left. It's Ooh. just it's to the point where it can crumble. Come on. Yeah. Huh? But think about what he's saying here. I will satisfy you in scorched places. I'm going to take care of you when you don't think you can be too care of. Yeah. I'm going to take care of you even when you don't allow me to take care of you. That's powerful. Oh, I want you to get this. He said, I will strengthen your bones. They're going to say, my bones. He will strengthen your bones. He knows he's going to give you strength to carry what you're going through. Come on. He's going to pick some new life up in you. He's going to give you a new bone world. Come on. He's going to give you a frame that you can build on. And I like this part. And you will be like a watered garden. Hello. Oh. Now I want to ask you something before we break. Are you dried out? Yeah. Are you dried out? Because it said water garden. Amen? I want you to think about that for a second. And like a spring of water whose waters do not fill. That's beautiful, ain't it? Uh, Father, we thank you for your word, the power that's in how beautiful it is. Father, we pray, Lord, that you just move on us this morning. Lord, help us receive it. Father, remove every bit of Brian out of the way. Lord, that your spirit just moves and anointing just talk. The Holy Ghost has these ways that you open up their ears to receive from you. Father, we ask it in the name of Jesus. Church says, Amen. Amen. So one of my favorite memories as a kid was messing in that cart. Now, my grandpa, he always loved turns. You know what I'm talking about, turns? Yeah, he ain't that big of a seat. Come on. Turns. And then he would do something that was very unique. Now, Grandpa would die some of the problem. You can't beat that. But Grandpa would just go into the garden sometimes and grab a turnip and with his pocket knife, Grandpa Tom would peel it and he'd walk around and shave some off of it and eat it. Yeah. But now, I did not expect none of you to be like, mm, mm, good, because most of you are like, what's a turnip? But, <laughs> but what I'm getting at is, he would always go in the garden and he would just freshly just 
grab stuff. Sometimes we go on a ride and he grabbed one turnip, a handful of radishes. Uh oh, yeah. maybe even some. He used to eat this thing called the onion sandwich. And he go in there and he said, Lord, I want an onion sandwich. And I'll be like, oh, what in the world is an onion sandwich? And he'd get a piece of bread and he'd slice an onion on it. Yeah. And that'd be it. Yeah. With another piece of bread. And then he'd be going down the road talking to me with onion bread, turnip bread, <laughs> and radish bread. And, and, and you're saying, well, what's that? Why is that so familiar? Well, it reminds me on how we should be. We should be able to walk into the garden that God's gave us and be able to take whatever we want at any moment. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Now think about this. One of my fondest memories is I'd walk out in that garden and he, he used to have even the water treaters that used to go like this. We all played yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're over the age of 50, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> and if we didn't have it, that didn't come out yet, it was just a little window thing. Huh? We used to go out there and in that garden, this is what it reminds me of, is it was never dry ground. He always had the water on. And he could walk through that garden and I could go down the rows. And I remember as a kid, uh, like being barefooted, and I'd take my shoes off and I'd walk in that garden and I could feel, this is so cool, I could feel the mud coming between my toes. And some of you are like, that's gross, we don't do that. But as a kid, there was nothing better than walking in the wet yeah. garden. Because I right. getting wet. Oh, come on. Yeah. Playing in the water. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm not playing in the water, I'm in the garden. But, but anyway, the water would be on my feet and it would be coming down off of me. And I remember how I could watch it run off the corn and I could see the dew that was on all the vegetables. And I remember Grandpa would never hardly ever turn that thing off unless it was a natural rain. He watered it in the morning. He watered it in the evening. Wow. He did, continually had water on it to the point where it wasn't scorched, it wasn't dry, it was always wet. In the middle of the summer, even in the midday when you wet water, you could take your hand and just really touch it by two inches deep and you could find moisture. Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. I got to thinking about that. And that's what kind of started. If you read these scriptures, he's telling us that we should be like a weather garden, a water garden. In other words, we should be so close to him in our lives that even when everything's going down and when everything's bad, that we can still be deep to find some moisture. There's still life in us. Look at your hands and there's still life in us. There's, there's still everything that you need. Now you're going to say, you're talking about a garden. Well, let's talk about elevate. Water always represents spirit. Hello. Come on. So when we're talking about a water garden, we're talking about something that is around us. You know, I, I can still see the water falling. But as a kid, I can see myself sitting there and the water be hitting me and I can hear it hit the leaves of the harvest that God had for Grandpa and Grandma. I can remember how it felt, and I can remember walking in the drive. Even when it was dry, you could still pick your foot down and you could feel cool. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Now, how would you like to have a spiritual relationship with God where it feels like that all the time? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Some of us are going through some struggles. We're having difficulties. We're having hard times. Oh, I mean, everyone is. Your pastor is. I can't seem to get over nothing. It's just killing me. But we all have them moments. But the moments are not made to destroy our relationship with God. Yeah. The moments are to enhance our relationship with God. Are you hearing me? See, I want you to think about this. Some of us have failed the garden in our heart. We have been walking around with bad feelings and, and, and emotions that has destroyed our relationship with God. In other words, it has turned off the water valve of God. And we're not feeling like we're in the spirit very much or we can't feel God. Now if that's you, that's just you. It's everybody. I want you to get what I'm saying. There's moments in your life where you feel like you can't find God's presence. Hello. Yeah. Don't feel like he's nowhere. Hello. Some of us is worshiping me and going and some of us is like I don't feel nothing. Hello. Yeah. The difference is not that you're a bad person or that something's basically wrong. The problem is when it comes to the garden of your heart, you have allowed other things to keep. But uh, creep in, we'll say creep, creep in without realizing it, and it has turned off the water. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to notice, I'm going to just talk about the water garden. I'm not going to talk about weeds and stuff, because weeds don't come into the water stop. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, don't float, you can float a weed out. You can't float out there to grow the water. Huh? So check about this, this is cool. So what's happening is, we've been taught that we look for all the weeds. We're so negative on everything that we're looking for this, we're looking for that, that's that negative. But the problem is, we try to do it on our own will instead of allowing God to do it. And the next thing you know, we're worn out because we're pulling this and we're pulling that, and we're struggling to get to where God wants us. Well, great. 
You got all the weeds out of your garden, but you ain't got the water. Are you here? Yeah. Huh? He, he talks about how great he is. Go back, go back to Hosea and just start the first verse. He, he talks about how everything is, but I want you to get this. He says, go direction. In other words, on direction, he's saying, just relax. This will disappear when I want it to disappear. Yeah. This will move when it needs to move. Yeah. But our problem is, ah, you've been in the garden trying to get weeds. Yeah. And you start doing it, right? What happens? At first, you start hearing a good news. Yeah. 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 Everything's good. And after like me, about two minutes into yeah. it, yeah. gratitude changes. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. And the next thing you know is you're frustrated because not only are you pulling the weeds, listen to me, now you're getting dirt on you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Now you're getting dirt on you. Now you're getting this on you. Now it's on your back somehow. Now you're sweating. Now you're fatigued. Now you're wore out. Yep. You with me? Yeah. And what's happened is, you try to take care of it all on your own, not realizing that the only thing that you really need was the refreshing water of God. Yeah. Now are you hearing it? So think about this. So I want you to hear that we sometimes in our heart, without realizing it, we turn off the spiritual part of God and we allow our hearts to be full of negativity. We allow our hearts to be full of this and full of hatred or I can't ever fix this. Why is this always happening to me? Why can't I get over this? Why don't they like me? Why do they do Hello? Why can't I understand? Why can't I do this? Why can't I? And we get so caught up in the negativity that we don't realize that we're not walking in the Spirit or in other words, we are not having a water garden in our heart of God's presence that can actually grow in. Some of us have been in church for 30, 20 years of your whole life. And you go like, I'm not no closer than I was two years ago. I'm no closer than I was last Sunday. Is that you? And what's happened is, without realizing it, you have turned off the main source of life because you've got so many other things going on instead of allowing God to take care of it all. Oh, that makes sense? you got to understand that sometimes it don't take much. Sometimes you just get where you're a little dry and you don't... You ever notice God is just like happens quickly? Oh, yeah. it's like all one bad Oh, that's okay. And then Wednesday wasn't good. You didn't like how Wednesday was. Next Sunday wasn't good. You don't like how it was. I just didn't feel it. I don't know what to do. And then next thing you know, you're skipping the next Wednesday. And you're skipping that, right? Yeah. Listen, you're saying, why are you talking about skipping services? If you're skipping services, you're skipping prayer time during the week. Come on. Oh, come on. Listen. Oh, what you to understand. What happens is, once it gets dry, I know this is the sages, once it gets dry, next thing you know, everything that can produce fruit, fruits of the Spirit, wow. oh, kindness, all that good stuff, is gone. Now I'm negative. Now I can't see nothing good. Now I'm hitting stuff on Facebook and doing this and that saying, hey, does anyone care about me? What do you think about me? Yeah. Oh, oh, so do I. Yeah. Who cares what they think about you? It's all about what God thinks about you. Wow. Yeah. I just wanted to know. Why did you need to know? Because I want to know, how do you love me? Do they, hello? Do you ask God how He loves you? Are you walking in the Spirit where you're so full of God's presence that your corn, that your tomatoes are great big around? I'm talking food, but I'm trying to get you to do it, okay? And your garden's so beautiful that no matter what everyone else thinks, because you're so beautiful on the inside that they can't say nothing about how gorgeous you are. Wow. And you're not second guessing how you are. Oh, think about that. The problem is, once you get past that spot, you get to the spot of the dust storm. That when the winds begin to blow, everything is going away. It's dried up. You can see the stems and the stalks of the tomatoes, the corn, the, the golden, the white in them. You make a rustling sound. No words to hear voices. You hear people talking. Say, guess what's going on? You don't understand my body. You don't understand why you're being with you. Now when the wind blows, it ain't the spirit. It's just more chaos, more disappointment. That's what to be, but we couldn't be honest in one of the three spots for most of us all. We want to do good. We don't want to be this way. We want to do all we can from God, but there's, there's some things in our heart that keeps us from being completely sold out or yeah. 
Let, let, let me not say so. I'm get the the, the, there's something in my heart that keeps me from being exactly what I dream of being or how to do it or what God wants me to do. There's just something that's blocking We'll blame it on people. We'll blame it on past. But really all it is is that we haven't spent time in the Spirit and allow God to move on us to water our water our garden. What's bad about it? So you can see a garden that's started off really great and watery. And then you can struggle with it. My grandpa used to call it stressing. And then he'd be stressing. Maybe a couple days without no water. And he'd stress it. And he goes, you can start seeing where everything started to turn. He goes, then you pull the water on. And I'd be like, why? He goes, because the plant learns how to absorb it and keep it. Yeah. So the state that you're in ain't a bad state. The state that you're in is God's way of hitting on alarms. Hey! There's a dust storm coming! You're not that water garden you need to be. No, you're not letting me guide you. You're not allowing me to take you where you need to go. But when we see those sourness, we panic. Call, call up. Oh my God, he don't love me no more. Let's give up on God. God didn't love me. No. I've done so much, he can't forgive me. Really? Turn on the water. Hello. Just turn on the water, right? So I want you to get this in Corinthians 4. There's Christ. And it tells you not to lose your heart. Hello. Yeah. Your heart. Your heart. No, let's be We lose our heart with God because it puts blood. Poetically, in the Bible, when it talks heart, it's mind. Yeah. Hello. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So let's talk about this. Let's turn it another way. If we lose our heart, the next thing we, well, the next thing that happens is inside of this, oh, we lose our heart. What happens is there's no circulation. And without circulation, you get numbness. And without circulation, you get, uh, yeah. you get the little funny tingles. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. you know what I'm talking about. You've all done that. You yeah. sat somewhere too long. We won't talk about the bathroom. You sat there too long, <laughs> and you can't stand up because you can do Facebook, and now you can't walk. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what happens is that's circulation. And what happened is you said so long that certain limbs of your body have been cut off. And what's so bad about the church today is we have had such bad circulation and we've had came such a dry garden in that we can't even circulate and be the hands and the feet of God no more because we lost our circulation. Yeah. Are you hear it? Yeah. Twice. Twice in Corinthians it says, hey! But every you do, don't lose your heart. Because if you lose your heart, you lose everything. Everything. No wonder the wisest, the wisest man that ever exhorted, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart. You know, Proverbs, let's just see Proverbs. Proverbs 4 23. I'm the American standard. Watch over your heart with all what? Diligence. For from it flow the. From it flows up. Right. Now listen. In other words, what he's saying is, I need you to be a water garden, and the reason you don't have no water in it is because you have not been guarding your heart. You've been just allowing everything else to dam it up. You've been allowing relationships to dam it up, work to dam it up, wishing you could be better to dam it. You've been allowing this, that, and that to build a dam over the phone that I need you to have full. And God's saying, it's not me, it's you that allowed it to affect your heart. From your, from it flow the springs of. Not only do we got to rely on the Spirit and allow God to direct us, this is teaching us that hey, I'm going to guide you, I'm going to direct you, I'm going to have water for you. But if you don't protect your heart, you're stopping it. In other words, it's not me not visiting you. It's not me not trying to seek you. It's I said I never leave or forsake you, God says. So in other words, what he's saying is, you're the one that turned off the heart valve. You're the one that has allowed other things to take over my position in your heart. Oh, yeah. Hello? You're the one. Because he says, watch over your heart with all diligence. In other words, I'm watching over it to the point where I know every little bit thing. I'm not allowing a little anger. I'm not allowing this. I'm not allowing that. I, I've got to stop any of this from affecting my water. Oh, you hear me? My water. Now, we know heart means 
urge the of my mind. In other words, I'm not going to allow anything to come in my mind. I'm going to overwatch it. So it always has a flowing flow of God's Spirit going through my In other words, going through my life because actually my life is God's garden. He gave me a purpose. He's gave me everything I need for my life to be successful. Come on, perfect, abundant. It's there, but it's up to me to allow it to be watered so I can live in the fruits of the Spirit. Hello, and have all the blessings, have all the goodness that God wants me to have. It's there, but if I don't protect my mind, it stops flowing. That's why some of you ever had, you ever had these years where everything's good and it seems like it's great? Yeah. And it seems like the next year is bad? Because you got comfortable where you were. Instead of turning the water up, you just kind of got, okay, I'll still let it dribble. And the problem is, God has already had your garden at a certain level. Once it starts growing, it has to have more water to keep growing. Hello. Your tomatoes only get as big as much water as you put in. As much water and fertilizer and taking care of it, you don't have very much water or good food in it, that bed will be like that. Right? right? You, you water it, you take care of it, you do everything you got to do to it. Come on, keep the worms off of it. Yeah. Do what you got. That tomato, can be you ever had the tomatoes like that? Yeah, uh-huh. Huh? You want to know why? It's full of water. It's what the tomato is. And it got that way because whoever was growing it took time to make sure it had plenty of in other words, that farmer's like, there's going to be times there's weeds there, but the weeds ain't going to affect my watering. There's going to be times the troubles are in your life, but you can't let the troubles affect your watering. You can't let your circumstance, the chaos of what you're going through, affect your relationship with God and the flow of spirit that brings living water that flows continually. You can't allow it to stop flowing on you. Because when it does, your fruits in the spirit get small. And if the fruits of the Spirit get smaller, the flesh comes back quicker. Are you hearing me? Think about this for a second. For from it flow the springs of... Can we teach? And then I'll move on to my story. This is beginning. You ready? For from it flow the streams of if you're not happy where you are in any circumstance, it's because you bought the flow, not because God ain't trying to push you. Oh. It ain't that God won't deliver you, it ain't that God won't move you up, it ain't that He won't get rid of the depression and anxiety. He's like, I'm just waiting to wash it away. Now I'm just waiting on you to turn that water off. So here we go. Let's talk about this. Let's go to Hosea. 6, 1, 2, 3. Here's the background. Hosea preached for about 80 years. Isaiah, Michael, war, you know, followers and whatnot. But anyway, he was the first and the largest known minor prophet. So that's about the only one here. The Christian was answered by Hosea. He does this. Does God love us even when our hearts are far from Him? Hosea says, yes. Right? Now, ain't that kind of funny? Where would that Christian come from? That Christian come from someone that probably, see, it, it, it proves that if you were to ask that with someone that was close to God at one point in time, hello, yeah, yeah. and knew God was in a relationship, yeah. and got to realize, hmm, I'm not as close to him as I should be. We don't talk as a, hello. We all have that one family member that we used to grow up with, we've done everything with, and then through time they say, you know, they're not around Oh, that just mean, come on, somebody. Come on. Family, friends, friends, it does the same thing. You can be friends, you can do everything for years, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they didn't even know they were gone. When did you move? Come on. Yeah. Huh? Well, that's what he's saying. This is how this is. He had a great relationship with God, but through the time the water got turned off, hello, and the next thing you know, without realizing it, God got farther away. But in reality, it wasn't that God got farther away because he said, I'll never leave you, nor. What happened is, the garden got more full of physical things, nature things, that he couldn't even see where God was. And the next thing you know, he went looking for God, which don't make sense because God's always with you. He's always one cry away, and he's walked away. And God's like, why, where are you going? I'm right here. And this guy's like, well, you know what? Hey, this guy still love me, although he's far. We've all been there. Can we be real? 
some of you in the last couple of months have went through some things and you wonder, does God still love me? Can you forgive me? Hello? And the answer is, yes. Just turn on your water. Just let God take care of it. It's a hard. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, here we go. This is it's, it's not as difficult as we make it to be. Hello. We can repent. Hello. And the problem is, once we repent, great, we gave it to God, and now we got to learn to let it go. The problem is, we don't know how to let go. Hello. I know some of you, some of you got the same mindset and temperament that I have. You make me mad, I'll forgive you. They don't mean I forgot about it. I don't mean it's rot. Yeah, it's rot. I didn't say I'm rot. Right. But sometimes I got to turn on a lot of water to get that out of my mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know what we're talking about? Yeah. So maybe we're start nodding your head because if you know what I'm talking about, you're like passing coffee to me this morning. Right? It's like in a garden. Right? Reeds and stuff are shallow rooted. Sooner or later, you keep that water going, they drown out. Yeah. They'll drown out. They'll turn yellow and drown out. Ain't it funny? Like when good fruit turns brown or yellow, it means it's dry and past its harvest. Wow. But when you overwater a weed, it'll turn yellow. Yeah. Showing that when you're in the Spirit of God, it'll die out. Now listen, yeah. here we go. Hosea 6, 1 and 3. Come, let us return to the Lord. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Come, let us return to the Lord. Lord for He has... Okay. Let's say that again. I want you to remember this. For He has... Right, don't forget that. But he will yeah. say it again, he will. Yeah. Okay, don't forget that one. Alright, now listen. It makes sense, isn't it? Listen. He has what? Yeah. Alright, don't forget that one. Say it again, he has. Yeah. Alright, now this is gonna see you're gonna see a different side of God and you're gonna like it, huh? But he will yeah. Oh now, come on, let's think about this. Let's take a little pause for a second. In other words, what he's saying is, he will what for? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what for is it different language in a minute, but he'll tore us. In other words, he'll rip us. Yeah. Because for something to be tore means it's got to be pushed to the max. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. You can take a good piece of cloth and you can pull it, but you get it right on the edge and you start giving it all it can handle. Next thing you know, you hear some strings popping. Yeah. That's how some of your mindsets are. Some of your temperament is. I can only take so much. I can't get... Right? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. You, you feel like you're in relationships with God, people, or this life itself, you feel like you've been ripped? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? For the Lord has torn us. Yeah. Okay, now let's just get to the point. That wasn't your neighbor, that wasn't your friend, that wasn't your past. That might be the tools and hands of God, but it wasn't none of you. It was God that that's you did. You don't know why you did something that wasn't right? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing something that I never thought I would do. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. I just don't understand. Well, you can't understand it. Because God's like, you know what? You're not where you need to be. Let me piss the stress on you. Wow, yeah. In other words, what God's doing is, I'm picking you in a stress hole because you turned the water off on me. So the only way that I can get you back where I need you to be is I'm going to apply some pressure. This either will make you or it will break you. Yeah. I'm going to start ripping on you because when you feel pain, you pray to me. Amen. When you feel like you can't make it, you pray. When you know the dream, you feel like you, when you realize you ain't got no control, you can't fix it, Amen. that's when you come to me. So God's like, you know what? I'm tired of waiting on you to get here. I'll just start putting some pressure on you. Amen. I'll start tearing you up a little bit. Well, that's good preaching. I know you don't like that because you're like, oh my God, beautiful God. He never did. Oh yeah, he'll do whatever it takes to get your attention. He'll do whatever. He said, I'm a jealous guy. Don't pick no one before. See, that's the problem. Some of you pick other relationships, other heart desire before God. And God said, I'm a jealous God. I'm fixing to rip up your house. So we start putting pressure on you. Yeah. I, I can hear the ball moving. these take over stuff to make this fall. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah. Well, that's what's, what's going on. He's ripping you. But the next verse, not even the next verse, in the same sentence, he has torn uh, us. Now, everyone say us. Uh, Stop thinking you're the only one. Uh, 
Right. It ain't never been about you. Your relationship with God ain't never been about you. It's about everybody. Yeah. Now, he writes it this way for you to get over yourself and realize you're not the only one having a stroke. Right. You're not the only one that needs some attention. Yeah. You're not the only one that needs some love. Hello, yeah. somebody. Yeah. So stop going, oh, yeah, you feel bad. Someone will be telling you their problem. You go, oh, I hear you. You got this going on. But let me tell you.
hello. Here's the next one. This is so cool. You can move this. Hello. Hello. He'll band you this. Come on. Let's go to verse two. This is so cool. He will revive us after. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not. They tell you that if you get hurt, right? That it'll be sore until the third day. Isn't yeah. that weird? And that's kind of true. You ever thought about that? Hello. He will revive us. After what? Yeah. He will raise us up on the. Now you will say, and listen, you can do this because we can take the Bible and, and it's gold and we can take that and talk about it. It's a foreshadow with all this to Jesus, in which he is. That's no problem. But what he's telling you here is it might take you a couple of things to get over it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let me explain why I'm saying it that way. Some of you think that as soon as you get done up here, it should just be completely out of your mind. And since it ain't, you think you're still sinning and you ain't giving it all to God. No. What God's saying is don't forget, it's a bandage. It might take you a couple of days to get over it. It might take you a couple of days to get over your feeling. It might take you a couple of days to come on somebody. You say, why do you do this? Because this ain't taught. This needs to be taught. You think everything's instant. Well, when he tore us, he healed us instant. And it didn't work. So now he wounds us, puts a bandage on us, tells us it's going to take a couple of days. But by day number three, I'm going to have you over it. The house is going to have us over it. In other words, he said, it's going to take three days of watering to get your garden back where you did your life. It's going to take three days to stay in the spirit. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Yeah. It's going to take three days to get you where you need to be. Yeah. Three days. Because after the first day of healing, they're going to do this. I want her to, I want her to be really needed. Yeah. Come on. Come on. God forgive you here. Probably got to do Oh, where are we Come on, man. Hello. Huh? Next day. You ain't for sure you'll call someone and ask them. Yeah. I would call her. Like, Did they God forgive me? Well, I didn't think you just asked me that. Because if you're second guessing, <coughs> more yeah. Yeah. Well, well, what he's saying is, you know what? First day is going to be doubt. Second day is going to be more doubt. Third day, though, you chill out. You let that water for two days. I'll start giving you a lot. I'm going to raise you up. I don't say raise you up. I know, I know you're dry. Ain't been in the spirit in a while. Hello. Yeah. Huh? I know you need some fruit. I know you need. I, need, I know you need a breakthrough. Come on. Yeah. I know you need some loving kindness. Come on. And some tender mercy. Come on. Yeah. I know that you need a breakthrough in your bank account. I know that you need a breakthrough in your. I know what you have need of. And God said, if you just let me heal you, bandage you, and if you would chill out for at least three days and stay in the spirit, I'll have enough spirit flowing in you that you can rise up out of that dryness, out of that desert, and you can start producing fruit. Our yeah. fuss is we want an instant. God's like, it ain't going to work that way now. Because now, you're going to have to have time to heal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. It goes back to, when, you know the story where Jesus told that one lamb. And so we love that story. Right? Yeah. I think this is my favorite part. You guys got that lamb. Oh, you little lamb. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, you little lamb. Huh? I, I, I say baby goat's calling the blood. Oh, you little baby goat. Anyway, you got that lamb. Right. Well, all we all all we see is this. He's loving it, right? <laughs> Next thing you know, if you read the story, all of a sudden, out of the middle of loving it, oh, he's so cute. He breaks his leg. <laughs> Does he not? Yeah. That's kind of a little weird, right? <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, but uh, he's holding it. He's loving on it. He's oh, right? In other words, it was torn. It was separated from God. He picked it up. Started healing it. And he's like, no, you're going to run off again. Yep. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to run off again. Let me give you a scar. Okay. You know that little lady? Like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> right? yeah. How many of you feel like that in your life right now? Everything went the way you wanted, but it wasn't as bad as it is right now. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody need to be preaching with me. And then he broke the lamb's leg. And the lamb's little lamb's like, oh. But then he says he put a split on it. He banished it. Sure, sure. Yeah, that. Huh? Did you tie that? That's the foreshadow of Jesus. Yeah. Come on, they tore. The bill was torn. Come on, I can go all day. Right? And sit there in the car. Right? He's in the tomb. What happens? Third day he rises. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We get that, but this is what he's telling you. He's like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna do you like that little lamb. I'm gonna break it up. Yeah. I'm gonna bandage it up. You're gonna be walking around the hill. So you walk a little more to your grab yourself. Right? And he said the reason I'm doing that is because that's the only way you're gonna. Why? Break the lamb's leg. You all with me? 
the great the land's lay because it will have to stay by him because he's the only one to feed it. He's the only one that's going to come on, water. He's going to be the only one to take care of it. Now think about what he did to this little lamb. If you were to say this, the little lamb was at the age where it's just about to be weaned. You know, it didn't even go cold. Yeah. And what happened is it got bothered, bothered away from his mom. And what happened was mom was trying to walk off and left it. Little lamb didn't know where to go. Come on. Mm -hmm. right? And that's how we all the it. We just wander off because we think we can do it on our own. Yeah. Then we fall yeah. down the cliff. God yeah. picks us up and he loves us. And then all of a sudden I know he breaks our legs. Huh? And God's like, you know what? I'm not going to allow you. I'm not going to allow you to be what you're used to. That you should the moment you used to be. So in other words, that little lamb would walk with the herd miles all day long. It would become that little lamb couldn't walk until the slaves messed up. Yeah. Yes, you picked yeah. it up. The one that broke it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you here? The one that broke it. Now the reason I'm saying this for two reasons, I'll, and I'll get back to it, is some of you are carrying an unforgiveness. Yeah. But you didn't realize, as bad as you are at that person, you're not allowed. Oh, yeah. And when your sights are so mad at the person, you don't realize God used them as a tool. Yeah. So remember, I got a sermon about that. We are nothing but fools with God. Yeah. We don't know what they did. Well, God's trying to keep your attention before it got there. You didn't realize you were in the wrong. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And it's like now the reason you're suffering? Oh, going through this? It's because this is the only way that you'll fix the relationship. This is the only way. In other words, I keep going this is the only way that I'm going to turn on the water and you're going to get a drink and that you're going to sustain it. Because most of us got saved and everything was great and then we ain't been saved with us. Because we take me. That's why you can't go no farther. There's good things when you return. 
Things ain't going to get no better until you return. Second part is, we got to learn how to press on. I'll do it in a different way. we got to learn how to forget. Uh oh, there are four district aspects in the scripture, right? This is so cool. you got to realize there's knowledge of the Lord that exists, the facts about God. Romans 11 and 33 says this, the death of His riches. we got to understand that God's riches and His blessings for us are deeper than we can see. Deeper than what we know. Hello? Everyone say deeper. Deeper. So I, if God's blessings are deeper than what we realize, it's going to take more water to get to their roots. Some of us just want to live off the skin part of the garden. God said, no, 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 my riches are deep. If you want it, but I really have for you, you're going to have to get deep. Old Tyler said it this way. you got to get deep in the spirit. But really what he's saying is, you got to turn that water on high, let it soak up in your life, then you'll see the things that you've never dreamed of. You'll get the depths that no one's ever seen. Hello? Go. What are they? Wisdom. Knowledge of God. That's beautiful. Then you got to understand that the Lord, come on, knowing the Lord is a heart that's understanding those facts that i got to get deep. Everyone say deep. Deep. All right, let me do it this way. I'm going to aggravate you. you got to be 10 feet deeper than you are right now. If you're in a good relationship with God, I'm not saying you're not, that relationship that you're in now will not sustain you by next year. They're going to have to get deeper. Yeah. Are you understanding that one? they got to get deeper. Mark 12 and 30 says this, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your... With all your... With all your... Come on, somebody. Huh? And with all your... So i got to do the what? The three things. Right? I'm going to love God with all my heart, because I'm going to repent the first day. Come on. Then the second day I'm going to work on my soul. I'm going to get my mind right. Once I got my mind right, day four, I'm walking in strength. Why? Because I'm allowing the Spirit to move. In other words, I'm not walking on my strength. I'm walking on God's strength. I'm realizing I can't make it, but I've had a good three days, and I know I can make it through God. Right? Then you got to understand the knowledge of the Lord is the experience of God. He gives you an experience. Stop looking at the pain that you're going through. It's chaos. Realize it's God giving you an experience. Yeah. Uh, let me do it this way so you understand. Everyone loves a good testimony. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Power in the temple, right? Yeah. It's an experience. Everything that you're going through that's a struggle ain't to kill you. It's an experience with God. Yeah. Uh, let me do it this way. It's like, it's a vacation with God. It's a, it's a trip across the city. It's a long trip. There's going to be times that God's driving you like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Hello? And God's like, step back and enjoy the experience. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Where are we going? Where are we going? Don't act like you don't have kids in that. Right? And that's what we do to God. God, I'm walking, why ain't I here? Why ain't I, why ain't I moving on? Why ain't I? And God's like, shut up and just enjoy the experience. It ain't about where you're going or what's this. It's about the experience being with me. I'll get you where you need to go sooner or later. But enjoy, how many of you enjoy the experience that God's giving you at this moment? It's hard to enjoy struggle. It's hard to enjoy difficulties. Oh, but then you didn't realize that we just told you, showed you in the Word of God that God's the one that's allowing it. Enjoy that experience. It means He thinks more about you than you do yourself. It also shows He knows you better than you know yourself. And He's like, all I'm trying to do is give you an experience so you'll have a stronger relationship with Hello? And I'll do this. It's like when you, you, you do studies, you see couples that are going through divorce and having hard times, right? Uh, there's couples that seem to have been divorced or haven't got divorced, but they stay friends and work through the relationship. You ask them in a survey later, how's the relationship now that you went through that and you stayed together or you got back together? They're like it's 20 times stronger. Oh, why? Because they realize they can work things out. And they realize that they can grow together in that relationship. Come on, somebody. They'll, they'll even tell you 25% or higher of that says that's because we started communicating. And that's what's going on. Got a great relationship. So we're going to have an experience. So you can 
Talk to me. Communicate with me. Yeah. Are you with me? Well, that's all, then. Then you've got to understand the knowledge of the Lord is the blessing from God. Yeah. Oh, we're still on an amen on that. The knowledge of the Lord is a blessing from God. Yeah. Why ain't you saying? It just told you it's a blessing. Yeah. Right. James 1 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Above? Yeah. Above? It comes from the Father above. And the Father of what? God? Oh. Think about that. Think about that. This is beautiful because he's saying, you know what? Everything that you get is so good that you're proud of, I gave you. I gave you. The stuff that you enjoy or you're afraid of losing, I gave you. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to understand what that means. It means, it's actually a question. Are you pressing on? Huh, I want to know something. How many of you are pressing on? Yeah, yeah. They're going to say, I'm here, man. That don't mean you're pressing on. Some of you here because it's family. Yeah. Right. Don't want to give another image. Yeah. Oh, oh. But how many of you pressing on? Pressing on means it's a struggle. I'm fighting. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I ain't going to quit it. Right. Right. Oh, somebody. We get to Romans 13, 11. And that knowing that the time, that now is the what? High time to wake out of sleep. See so what happens is, so, uh, I'll do this, but then you understand. Sometimes, Mike used to fit me in this choco, and with that pressure, Sooner or later, I fall asleep. Well, I see stars, and I go black. My brother's like, don't go to the light. He's <laughs> cool. Huh? That pressure has your wall because there was no circulation. Yeah. Got me where I lagged out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he slapped me and wake me up because he's afraid I died because he held it too long. Right? And my first thing would be like, what happened? What happened? I didn't know what happened. Right? Yeah. And he'd be laughing at me. He'd be like, I'll show you. And you do it again. All right? You with me? Now let me explain that. Sometimes, what's going on in your life, you don't understand. Wow. Hello. What, what happened? Where'd this come from? How'd this blindside me? I never thought I'd do that. I never thought I'd be this way. That you? Come on. And what happened is, you got under a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know how that circumstance happened. You don't know how you got there. You know, it's okay. I'm going to keep up. Hello. Yeah. Come on. In other words, sometimes you got to press on. In other words, you got to fight that strangle hole. Just because he choked you out once don't mean he can choke you out twice. Just uh -huh. turn your back. Anyway, listen. You've got to press. Everyone say press. Right. You've got to press on. Let me do it in other words so you understand. When you have olives, you got to like olive oil. You got to like olive oil. I love garlic stuff all. Yeah, I had to buy them with Carmen that there and she got that out of love. Uh, but if you're going to make olive oil, you got to take all the good olives, huh? you put them in a what? Press. And you have to put pressure on them. You all with me? And as you put pressure on them, it keeps tightening, 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 right? And then all of a sudden, what happens? Oil comes out of the bottle. Right? And the Bible represents the anointing. Do you realize that the pressure that you're going through is God's way of trying to get you in the anointing? Yeah. God's way to see if you're going to hold up to the fire so you are going to can live? Right. Come on. That's good, right? Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Let's talk about the pathway to revival. Let me y'all out here. Okay? That will take you. Huh? Through the pain, the purpose. Now listen, everyone say, through pain, through pain. to get yeah. my purpose. That's what that is. That you find that in, in verse 1. The word for is a severe kind of unsettling. That's what it means to you. Unsettling. It's unsettling. Do you, you feel that way in your spirit sometimes? It's unsettling? Yeah. Hello? It's, I just don't know. And, yeah. and why that is, is because it's God's way of trying to get your heart back. Yeah. Trying to get your mind back. Trying to see, he makes it unsettling. Yeah. I just don't know that. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Some of you struggle with that in your mind? Right? Yeah. And what that is, that is what a Hebrew verse you're torn is, it's unsettled. In other words, you ever had these conversations? I know what you do this, but it'll be okay, God forgive me. Yeah. Oh, we got five on two people to help. Huh? And you had this mind about, I know better to do this, I wouldn't do it. I don't know, I don't know. I shouldn't be thinking this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're poor, don't we rip like it does in our language, it means unsettling. In other words, we are fighting with God in our mind. In other words, God is trying to kick out the flesh in our mind. 
And what's happening is, God's saying, you got to do this. And the mind's saying, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. And we're torn with split personality. So, <laughs> he's, he's pulling. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And that's what that is. Can I tell you why I'm saying that? Some of you know that you can be a teacher and you can be the best teacher you need to be and be a preacher. Some of you know that you might not have a call as is the leader of the church or over church, but you know that you're supposed to be witnesses of people and you don't witness to them. You know you should be doing this and hello. Yeah, yeah. And you don't and you're like, I want to know nobody. You wake up in the morning sometimes like, I'm going to tell them today. And it, you don't tell nobody. Yeah, not, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's what that is. It's, well, really what's the best that I'm thinking do it. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, this is cool. It just happens. What that is is God drawing your heart back to must be John. Remember John with his uh, head on Jesus' chest? Huh? It's imprint. In other words, you do that long enough, heartbeats will match. When a baby's born and people watch it, they don't know that they'll match long. What John is like, you know what? I want to have the heart of So I'm going to pet my head. Head. There was a head. Yeah. On his heart. Because if I can get my mind to think like God's heart, I can be here, the unbelievable. Yeah. I can see who I really am. Come on. Huh? Next way through revival is this. I'm not going to lock it, but here we go. Do that a lot. You're not going to get to a good revival until you die. Yeah. All right, I'll do this one. When Jesus walked the earth, uh, or I was before you had the Old Testament, you pick God unless you went to the Holy of Holies, right? Yeah. Then Jesus come along out of nowhere, come on, start teaching, doing everything different, right? right. Start healing people, we see miracles, come on, blind people, yeah. multitude, broke some fish up, dead everybody, right? Yeah. That, that was great, right? Yeah. Huh? But until Jesus died, he didn't change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Until Jesus died, hello, no one really believed who he was. Oh, no one's going to believe you the way that you want them to believe until they see you totally die and come up a new person. Come on. Change comes by death. Uh oh. See, God's goal is always <coughs> ready to bring pain. Come on. Because through that pain, He takes us to a better place. And He'll say, That's crazy. How's that work? Look at Job. Job chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. You can go there. Thank God, you're going to go there. You see, Job had everything, right? Riches and everything. Now, I want you to check this out. This is cool. Now, one day in the heavenlies, God's sitting there checking everything out. There comes the old devil, and he goes, uh, he and not the devil, but God says, Have you ever considered Job? That proves to us, right there, that the circumstances that are happening in your life ain't nobody else's fault. It's this God trying you by fault. And what's all that done? I ain't looking at Joe. I know Joe. He won't follow you no matter what happens. You got a hedge around Joe. You protect Joe. Now, now think about that. That means Joe got a lot of water in his garden. Yeah. And the other side. I'll remove it. And you're thinking, why would God be so cruel? Because he's like, I'm trying to prove the world that I'm still God. I'm trying to show the devil that hedge or no hedge, he'll still love you no more. So in the middle of your chaos, you still love God in the middle of the chaos. You know, we're going to be serious. Yeah, I'll be in that chaos. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Poor Lord, man, sat down on the ground. You got all kinds of funky stuff growing. And stuff happens in what they're doing. It's getting ashes. Point ashes all over. Oh. In the middle of all that, he's like, no, I'm still going to serve God. But I'm going to be quiet, but I'm going to do things. That's fine. Can I tell you what that really is? You with me? That's Job saying, you know what? You can take everything in the physical, as long as my heart's water with God. That's all I need. And in the middle of all the Job's losses, what happens? He gets everything back. You know, but it's the one that died! Yeah, true. But he got to experience him for a while, or let him for a while, and then come home. And the things that he wished he could have done personally, now he makes sure he doesn't die. Yeah. So you minister, the think your ministry's dead? Get over! The things that you did wrong, you wish you could change in the first one, he allows you to do in the second one. Because you missed it, because you didn't have the water in your garden. <clears throat> he 
it's going to let you have it back. And then so. Sometimes uh, you hear this all the time. You don't know, you don't want to know how bad you love them until they're gone. Yeah. Right, can we really be real? It ain't that you didn't know how much you love them. It's that you didn't let them know or you didn't do everything you could to show them. So sometimes God's like, you know what? You're not showing me that you love it, so let me put a little tour in your life. And put a little trouble in your life. And let me put this chaos on there so you really know if you love it or not. Because you love it when everything's good. But do you love it when everything's gone? Do you love it when no one likes you? Do you love it when no one's helping? Do you love it when the money's gone? Do you still love it when the relationship's poor? Do you still love it when the family's not right? Do you still love it when everyone's a baby? Do you still love it? The problem. Heartache. Then the chaos is a lot. Do you still love it? Because your garden ain't been on, the water ain't been running, and I didn't know. He's forgotten that I'm a jealous God. No, that's good for but God, I'm a jealous God. So I need to know when you really stay. People say, well, I ain't never really done that. Don't mean that sometimes you don't want to try and use the secret you say. That's an awesome thing. See, God brings, I'm going to come close with this. God brings us to the death step. Where death sometimes eats you. In other words, sometimes he brings us to the state where it's like, I'm quitting, I ain't going back. I'm quitting God, quitting church, quitting everybody. I'm quitting. <laughs> Maybe it ain't church. Maybe you know God's standards on relationship. Families. I'm quitting. It ain't the way I want. It don't matter what you want. I don't want to go to church. Oh, I don't get the attention I need. I don't get this. This thing. So what? Realize you're in the trial. And God's trying to tell you anyone you're with is better than the one you think you need. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's get rid of the trial. It's just an experience. It's just an experience. You know what makes life great? Experiences. The experience of when a new baby is born. You hear that cry for the first time? Oh, you love that kid. Then you have that experience where it poops all over you and you're coming there to do that. You're like, I hate that kid.
But if you think about it now, the experiences of death that broke your heart at that moment, when you think about it now, it's the ones that bring the best experience you've got. My mom died, broke my heart to it. Dad died, broke my heart to it. Now when I think about them being gone, it's not the same thought I had at, at that moment. It's more the thought of we all hated it at that moment. That's the funny stand for my college walk around sometimes. He's even having jokes. I go, Patrick was crazy. He's going, Is it Bobby? When it first happened, yeah. Is it Bobby now? No. They don't even Bobby that knowing that when that day comes, Carl's going to pick me out in the middle of the field nowhere. There'll be a box once a month with a ball. But the moments that were so bad at that time are the moments of the greatest thing. Huh? Experience is a personal problem. Are you here? I'm hoping. I'm done. Well, I want you to just give me, give me about three minutes. What you're going through is an experience with God that is not the revival that you need. Go is what is not the revival Go that you need. You know what's so cool about it? Once you get to that certain spot, it's not some general rain in summer. It's the it gets worse before. Yeah. Hello. You know what's so good about rain? It comes that it I love this, but it rains all the stuff outside because that you're so good. Yeah, yeah. That's what every great down this way to go to them. When we allow God to start watering the garden, all of a sudden everything starts to come better. Yeah. The chaos is around your mind. All this, all of a sudden, you smell a new life. You yeah. smell freshness. When God brings you to the next thing that you know, it starts getting all the dirt, you up all the other yeah. It starts refreshing. God wants to be fun. But you stay there anyway. Everything that mom told me was going to happen is happening. We're calling with all that laid down. 
eternal thing. Where's time in my life? But well, God gives me promise. I got it back. Perfect. Not yet. Perfect. <laughs> start. Don't <laughs> <No>, start. <laughs> right? Yeah. One of my best fondest memories is in football. Never got allowed to carry the ball. One day we were fixing to win the championship. No one could run the ball in. Coach said, I didn't hear someone run the ball straight. And I'm talking, I'm out, and I'm like, I can run that ball. Coach put me in. I don't even know what I'm doing. He goes, he's going to run right up the middle. Good. Because all I did was play linebacker and, and nothing else. They gave me the ball. Good what I did. Four. I never forget the feeling of scoring a pitch down. And how it made me feel that I didn't have to do with someone else. Great still today that you can't call me dad. Sad to say you went to college. He is. But now I wouldn't want to be going up because I know now when I'm done. Yeah. Good yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Last time we didn't think we were going to have to go out. Remember that one time we had no money for your bills, but you did it? Remember, sir, remember your kids take your face to die? Remember when your marriage was falling apart, baby? 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 Remember when your marriage was falling Hi everyone, I'm Corbin Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. Want to say a special thank you for listening to Amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you're joining us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you're joining us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you're asking, and you're saying, corporate, you know, resonate. Now, you guys always bless us, but we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Well, as you ask, we are multiple ways, form in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one. Join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location, 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesday nights at 6.30, and we do keep in mind, things schedule subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little tidly thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR. If you want to resonate, you're giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and secure. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail If you want to mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. And those other ways you can resonate you giving. And remember, show love, your peace, and say Jesus. Oh, hey, what up, man? What's up, buddy? <laughs> How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo! Man, I just came out of resonate, man. <laughs> you know it's all good, man. Woo! It's all us talking about it. Hey, why don't you come join us? Sundays, 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. 
Wednesday. Wednesday, six thirty. It's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you. Our church is a great family church, and your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love, give peace. Resonate, Jesus. If you watch the hearing the monitor, Pastor, that's awesome. Wow. Woo! I never ever thought about it a garden like that before. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Mm. Are you dehydrated? Are you dried out? You know, from a physical standpoint and most importantly a spiritual standpoint, you must water your garden daily. That water has it's not only physical nutrients and vitamins, but spiritual nutrients and vitamins. That will help you throughout the day. And you know, being dried out is literally one of the worst things that can happen to you. You know, I know we always see in the stores, you know, the prunes, the raisins, the craisins, known as dry cranberries, and a lot of dried up fruit and all that. And while when we put it in our mouth, it's always good and tasty and sometimes healthy. But when you have dried out fruit like that, or just dried out stuff, period, especially the positivity, if that's dried out, that's bad. You got to keep watering that bad boy every day. Because that's what keeps the body going. Because remember, the body is more than 80% of water. It's 80% water. And if water represents spirit, from a physical standpoint, yes, it's water. But from a spiritual standpoint, it's 80% spirit. In this case, 80% God. And every night when you go to bed, or just when you go to sleep, full eight hours, you literally lose two ounces, two ounces of the full eight ounces that you normally are required, that are normally required for a day, you lose two of them. Every time you go to sleep. And then you have to refill and refresh yourself. Every day. That's why the Bible talks about renewing the mind. It's a refreshment. Not a look back. It's a refreshment. A stuff. A positivity that happens daily in your life. You know, I know we're going to talk about this next week. But it should be mentioned here as far as the water garden is concerned. Now, you got to protect your garden from all that bad, the bad stuff and all that. Because when the bad stuff comes in, it can literally choke your garden. And you can literally just have just dead soil. Same as true spiritual here. If you don't protect your heart. You are literally, no, think about this as a water hose. The water hose connects to the water source. And a little, and a little turn on thing. When you turn it on, water flows through the hose and flows out. When, if you don't turn the water thing off, and the water's still running, but you literally try to twist it, you're taking away the significance of the water flowing. And literally, you're cutting out the power, power source, power supply, and all of it. 
Same it is spiritually. You realize that if you don't protect your heart, you're literally twisting and stopping the blood flow of God and stopping the flow of God's water in your life. Did you know that? Spirit flows every day. It's up to you to get on board. It's up to you to keep filling yourself with those spiritual nutrients that God has already got placed for you. It's up to you. Don't remove the power supply. Don't remove the deal, as I mentioned, that's 80% water. And I'm, let me be the, the one to talk to some folks here. I know way too many times when our water's not when our garden's not watered and we're in dried out times. We always want to go to God for our convenience. We like to go to God just so, just because, and we like to praise and thank God just for the good. But when the bad comes up, oh, that's when we pray to God the most. Or when stuff goes on on the planet, whether it's in the daily news, and I can say that because I work in news myself and sports. Whether stuff goes on in the news or whether stuff goes on elsewhere. We let all of that junk and fear and all of that Choke our water supply to where we can't even get filled by God on an everyday basis. Shame on us. Shame on us. God's got new flowing, new living water constantly flowing every day in your life. Why do you want to cut off the water supply? Why do you want to cut it off with all that junk? All that junk. Why would you literally want to cut off all the good with negativity? Why? Hello? Why? Do we only wait until bad things happen? Or bad trials happen in order for us to really talk to God. If that's the case, and honestly speaking, you really don't have a relationship with. Him. Why do you always why do we always want to praise God when everything is good? But we can't praise him when things are bad. Maybe it's our mindset. Oh, we can't think about God because things are overwhelming us. Guess what? If you let things overwhelm you, you just took off the water supply. You just cut the water off that God has for you for your life. Why take that chance? Why? God's got the perfect water for you. And see, this is a cool thing about, you know, churches like us are around. You remember that story in the Bible of the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well? And bottom line, and it's a little bit similar to today, like denominate, like this denomination can't associate with that denomination and all of that. Same thing happened here. And Bottom line, Jesus broke tradition. He broke the R word. Oops. Broke the R word and broke tradition. And bottom line, offered her the water that will never ever run out. She just said, you know, just get, look, get some water. But Jesus. 
stepped out big time and said, hey, look, this water right here ain't gonna fill you up. But the water I give you will fill you up and you'll never ever run dry if you take it. Let me say this to you. The water that God has for you It's the water that never ever will run, ever run out. Why don't you start taking advantage of it? You know, you need water to grow plants and to grow fruits. From a physical standpoint, you need water to grow plants and to grow fruits and to grow veggies. And all of that. You need water for that, right? What do you think you need spiritually? Do you realize that that never ending water produced something called fruits of spirit? And there are, before the fruits of spirit even came alive in the New Testament, did you actually know it was actually alive in the Old Testament? There were multiple people that used that example. Multiple people that benefited from having the fruits of the Spirit. I'll give you one of them. Job. Did you actually know that Job actually had fruits of the Spirit? Before he even came over and Paul talked about that? In, in Galatians? Do you realize that Job had the fruits of the Spirit? Especially the one fruit at bottom line you really uh, need your water on. Long suffering. Another individual in the Old Testament that it simplifies the fruits of the Spirit. Joseph. Everything came up around him, threw into the well, but not one time he even let his water get contaminated. Not one time did he even let his water get contaminated. Not one time. And look what has happened every single time. Even when a famine took place, Joseph had the living water. He had the fruits of the Spirit. He had that living water. To our bottom line, and watered a garden that was filled with famine and ended up resurrecting the city. And resurrected the nation. Why? Because he watered his spiritual garden. Try it, will you? It ain't hard. Don't let the negativity and all of that squeeze and choke the life out of your water. Especially when that water is needed for that garden that can produce fruit they'll save souls God thank you so much for reson resonating your sound to us and thank you for watering our garden thank you for your spiritual water and thank you and hope for watching hey ain't no service like a live resonating service because the live resonating service don't stop why should you be left out come join us we love to have you here right here at Resident Church info right there on the screen plus four ways to resonate you give at Resident Church Jonesboro.com is the other option and our pictures news scoops views info so much more facebook.com forward slash Resident Church Jonesboro and watch this program on YouTube channel because like the video subscribe to the channel and ring that bell ding 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 that way you ain't missing a thing oh yeah there's another part to this coming next Thursday night and it's called Heart. We're going to deal with it right here on this program right here next Thursday night 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on this station and 9 p.m. Eastern globally on YouTube. Please join us will you for our entire crew for everyone at Resonate and for everyone at City Country Media Television Partners Group. I'm Chris Heineken. We say to you Show love, give peace, you know it. Resonate Jesus. We'll see you this Thursday night in prime time for Resonate Cell. Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. We'll see you Thursday night in prime time. So long, everybody. Neither death nor grave.
Não sei me ensinar 